Triple J, and welcome to Brain Food, where I tell you what's yummy and nutritious for your head. Let's face a really ugly truth about the entertainment that we ingest, regardless of the medium that it's from, and that is, it's problematic to some degree or another. Now, this isn't born out of maliciousness, partly, but because of the society that we ourselves are born into, and the values that we learn and pass down from generation to generation. Firefly is, in some ways, a great story about fighting back against the establishment, but it comes at the cost of appropriating Chinese culture and language, draping them about the mostly white cast like a change of clothes. The Walking Dead has some fantastic acting, and characters in it, but it can't seem to go a single season without brutally killing off Latino and black characters, along with an underlying anti-intellectual message, especially after this last season. The Legend of Korra has, from all that I've heard, really great writing in its third and fourth season, but the first and second are shallow, sexist, and very much troublesome. Not to mention, it can't seem to go a single season without really abusing its lead female character. Both Marvel and DC Comics have fantastic superhero series, but there's still a problem with regards to diversity of LGBTQ people and people of color. And today's book, Nightshade by Shay Goffrey, offers up some fantastic writing in the political machinations of people in power, of women in a patriarchal society using the power that they can wield to support one another, but at the great cost of painting Middle Eastern men as brutal, barbaric, sexist, and misogynistic. The story centers around the Kingdom of Linus sending its sole daughter, Princess Jessa, of King Abdul Jahid to the eldest son of his neighboring kingdom, Erevan, as a peace offering to ensure a brighter future. While there, however, Princess Jezza ends up falling in love with the daughter of King Owen of Erevan, Princess Darius, who is openly gay and a member of the royal guard. This leads to further complications as everyone is just trying to figure out what everyone else is up to as well as more than a few dark secrets being revealed by other people, just to stir the pot. I will say this, which is that what the book does right, it does also very right. The character interaction and dialogue is simply wonderful, and it was great to see how women were supportive of one another, and very complimentary to Princess Jessa without fetishing her. Princess Darius, known to her friends and family as Dari, reminded me a lot of Haruka Tenno from Sailor Moon, who is as good with her words and wits as her sword. Princess Jessa is also of a strong mind, having been forged in a very abusive environment with very few people to turn to. Heck, at times I was quite surprised at how well adjusted she was. And this leads to my central problem with this book. The Kingdom of Linus is definitely Middle Eastern themed, with its vast deserts and the naming of its people, and Shea Godfrey depicts the ruling class as a bunch of murdering, incestuous, raping sadists, with the common people under the boot of a vain, tyrannical leader. Compared to the Kingdom of Erevan, which, while not perfect, is filled with white people who do not put gay people to the death and actually treat the women with respect. It also doesn't help that the good King Owen has something of a redemption near the end of the book for having tried to straighten out Derry earlier in her life and make her more into a traditional girl. Compared to the brutal rule of King Abdul Majid, Owen comes across as human and flawed, while the other is shown to be nothing more than a shallow racist caricature. It doesn't help that for however much Jessa and Derry grow, develop, and become closer, that we're reminded of how ignorant, backwards, and savage the Kingdom of Lioness is. It doesn't help that for however much the women in this book support and uplift one another, using the power and the privilege that they do have in one patriarchal society, that the other is shown to be that much worse because the ruling men are brown of skin. Frankly, I'm not even angry at this book. I'm just severely disappointed. I've seen this kind of thing, both in fiction and real life, 
where one marginalized group is uplifted at the cost of another, for no good reason whatsoever. And the fact that this book ends on what could be surmised as a cliffhanger, as though trying to prompt me into buying the second of the series, just leaves me tired. No, I don't wish to read more about how Princess Jess's older brother, Malcolm, wants to rape Derry, or how he sexually assaults her at almost every interaction that they have. Frankly, about the best analogy that I have for this book is that it's a beautiful garden filled with many a colorful plant that's undercut by an infestation of weeds and an army of snails. In all honesty, I really can't recommend this book to anyone. I'm Triple J, and that's all I got left to say. Take care.